Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. I'm here today with John Leslie Brown, who is an incredible motivational speaker. He is the author of The Harvard Effect. Uh, he also has won a and has been a co recipient of an Emmy. And Mr. Brown also serves as a proud White House ambassador for 1 million African American youth in the National Park. I mean, the, the list goes on and on of, of uh, John Leslie Brown's achievements, but John Leslie uh, and I had the opportunity to speak together at an event called Epic in San Diego a couple of years back, and we connected like straight away. Uh, we we're having a good laugh like, right at the front of the room and uh, continued conversation from there, and we've developed a friendship. And, uh, you know, every time I speak with John, he's just dropping knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. And he also connected me with his father, who you may know as Les Brown, the legendary motivational speaker. And so as you could imagine, John Leslie has been guided along the way and groomed along the way. And John Leslie has really stepped out as such an incredible uh, leader for the next generation. So John, it's great to have you here on the Addicted to Success podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. You're a great friend, a great thought leader. I, I've been subscribed to Addicted to Success for a long time. When I went to your website, I said, wow, this is how you build a community. And so thank you for sharing, sharing me with your community that you've worked so hard to build from scratch. Thank you, bro. Well, thanks, being, thanks for being one of the many millions that supports us. And, uh, uh, you know, we love sharing your content too. You, you drop nothing but... Uh, incredible value for the audience. So I uh, continue to bring that to us and we'll continue to share it. But John, I wanted to, to ask you real quick, and I, I noticed lately you switched gears. You are running right now uh, for, for office and uh, you're a 2018, 2022 candidate for governor of California. This is huge, man. This is huge. Uh, why, why governor of California? What excites you about that? Well, it's not about titles. As you know, leadership is not about titles, servant leadership. Mm -hmm. It's all about what does it take to bring out the best in others? And all my life, I've been dedicated to helping people find a purpose with their life and find a way to develop a durable, sustainable advantage in a global economy. You see, a third of the jobs that exist today will not exist 20, 30 years from now. And so as governor, my job is to disrupt, to innovate, and to create real change with a 100-year plan for America and a 100-year plan that starts with a 100-year plan for California. See, we're tired of patchwork politics. We're tired of political debate. And we need to move to what one of my mentors say, uh, Brett Labitt, we, we're moving from political debate to political mastermind. And it's our job in our lifetime, we will make sure that we develop the political mastermind that's not about the talking points of the past, but about the stepping stones of the future. Ooh, I love that. The stepping stones of the future. John Leslie, let me ask you this. What's it like growing up uh, with a father like Les Brown? Like he is a great leader. We know that. What's it like growing up under his, uh, I guess, his, his guidance? And how do you bring this into your world today? Well, as you know, my dad was adopted. And he was adopted by a woman by the name of Mrs. Mamie Brown. And she, she, is, she is our inspiration. She had a third grade education, but her heart is bigger than Warren Buffett's bank account. You know? <laughs> and and um, two words for you, high hopes, okay? <laughs> I had high hopes. I bet. With my dad coming from Liberty City, a poor section in Miami, labeled educably mentally retarded, he used the inspiration and the motivation from his mother's love while he was listening to her clean floors on Miami Beach. He listened to A Stranger's Secret in the World by Earl Nightingale. 
he listened to 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 Napoleon Hill and and these great thought leaders that have defined and redefined this 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 modern time that we live in today and it's my obligation to bring those high hopes to life and high hopes is also an acronym that's what my friends call me as you know it stands for a hip hop intellectual growing higher helping other people everywhere soar <laughs> I mean, stretch over all restrictions. So at the age of 10 years old, my grandmother, Mrs. Mamie Brown, she passed away from breast cancer. And mm. so many families are reliant on the strength of that Mamie Brown to keep them going. That was the toughest time in our family. And that's the time when I first decided that I was going to use my voice that I was going to share my gift with the world. And I wasn't speaking for a paycheck. I wasn't speaking for votes. I was speaking on behalf of my grandmother, Mrs. Mamie Brown. Wow, wow, dude. I remember you uh, sharing with me such an awesome insight. We were in San Diego. It was nighttime, it was like maybe like eight o'clock at night. We were hanging out on one of your friend's balcony and we're just chatting away. And you were saying, I want to leave an immortal impact. Yes. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, yes. A couple years back. Your mortal impact. Yeah. So I'm a part of the first family of motivation. And my dad and and my family and and I, we've we traveled the world nationally and internationally. And our company, World Impact Now, it's all about learning and working with servant leaders from around the world to make a positive change, to make a positive, durable, sustainable impact. And when I think about the, they ask the top insurance companies in the world, what do you want to leave behind for your children? And, and it wasn't their, it, it wasn't their gold, right? <laughs> it wasn't their Teslas or, oh, I want my iPhone X. No, <laughs> it was their values, their values. And the thing that shifted for me is that it is one thing to have a great father, but it's another thing when you become a dad. And as you know, I became a dad. I gave birth to, to, to my son, Honor Phoenix Brown. And when I looked into his eyes, something changed in me forever. I knew that it wasn't just about playing it safe and doing what I could to get by, but every child matters. Every child deserves the same opportunities that I grew up with in this time for us to keep on carrying the torch. Oh man, I love it, I love it, that's awesome. I can definitely see the shift in you, that's for sure. So John Leslie, can you share with us a few strategies that you implement into your life to become a great leader? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. First of all, let's talk about this idea of becoming a great leader, okay? So, um, I'm in, in California, and this is the home of a, an industry that we kind of developed out here, uh, makeup, you know, the makeup artists, right? And so <laughs> makeup artists, are, their whole job is to, to, to make people, to bring out the stars, to make you look the best on, on the outside so that you can go, grow, you know, glow in front of that camera. But when you are a leader, you are not a makeup artist. This is not so you can cover up all your flaws and act like there's no skeletons in your closet. We all make mistakes. But guess what? When you are a servant leader, you have an obligation to be a wake-up artist. Yes, yes, yes. You are a wake-up artist. You have to wake up the people with letting them know the realities. Yes, it is tougher than it was baby back then it was tougher than it was some times ago that when you shift from when you go from an agriculture to an industrial economy there's going to be a turning and a shift thousands of jobs are going to be lost thousands of new jobs are going to be made the ones the difference is it's not how much discrimination there is right it's not not how much money is in your account as you know we've seen throughout history many people from all walks of life, come to America with nothing but a dream on a napkin and they turn it into a global empire by working together 
doing what? Waking up to the resources that we did not even know was right underneath our noses. And the most valuable resource that we have right now is within our relationships. Harvard University did a longitudinal research study and they found after studying people's lives for over 50, 60 years as they entered their lives, what did they value most at the end? And their number one prized possession was their relationships. And so here's the first tip for, for your global audience since we're talking to the millions. Let me get straight to the point. Look at your relationships in three ways, okay? Um, here's the thing. And, and <laughs> uh, Benjamin Franklin, he, he says something that I love. He said, blessed are those that seek nothing for they shall never be disappointed, okay? <laughs> that is deep. Oh, so if you are, are that, that, that means something that, you know, everyone's not seeking. Everyone's not actually in a position where they're doing their civic duty and they're, they're, they're playing their part. Some people have given up on their dreams. They've given up. They're blaming systems that, they, that are in their minds for holding them back, right? And the thing that you have to realize, you are a relationshippreneur, We've got to develop relationships and look at your relationships in three ways. And I talk about this in my book, Harvard Effect. You look at your relationships in terms of um, shareholders, stakeholders, and placeholders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like that. I like you that. See, you That's got crazy. shareholders, placeholders, shareholders, stakeholders, and placeholders. Shareholders, we are in a market share market share, which means that if you are not willing to share your gifts, your talents, if you're not willing to share your ideas, you will not reach that critical mass to the marketplace. And you've got to be able to share it around the world. And then you'll have people that value exchange will take place. Amen to that. Amen to that. What about the placeholders? Ah, I knew it was going to go. Okay. So, <laughs> so let's go in order. So, so, now, the shareholders, you got to keep in mind, is that you scratch their back, they scratch theirs. You give them something, they give your something. So, so you, cannot, you, know, you cannot expect people to pay you based off of how much time you have in the day. That's not the society that we live in. Guess what? We all have the same amount of hours in the day. It's about yes. how we use those hours. And here's what I was taught. Mamie Brown's grandbaby boy taught me this. Uh, well, my dad taught me this through her, is that you don't get paid by the hour. You get paid based on the value that you bring to the hour. Okay? Mm. And so they have shareholders that they'll be free there for you as long as you can bring some value to their hours. But until then, they won't take your call. They won't return your letter. You're not going to get a retweet. And, and, and what happens is the moment that you increase your own personal stock, the moment that you start to work on your personal economy, I'm not talking about the cryptocurrency, I'm talking about the inner currency, the currency inside your voice, the currency inside your soul, the currency inside your spirit. As we enter this era of the new awakening, where the excuses of the past will no longer prevent us from stepping into the future that was carved out for the shoulders that we are standing upon. When you move from that, you move from that shareholder mentality, going into a business room, trying to trying to network work with commission breath and complaining about our economy because you're trying to suck up all the value then you'll meet some stakeholders and some stakeholders that means that we've got to look at how do we adapt this new tax plan to make sure that companies pre-revenue companies get funded when you just have that napkin idea before you have that those those shark tank numbers before you put in the shark tank yeah. we need to go back into the dream tank I'm working with top economics about jobonomics, how we're going to create 20 million new jobs in America. Now see, now what do I get out of 20 million new jobs outside of bragging rights? I get a society where I'm more than just a shareholder looking what I can get until I die. I get to be a stakeholder in America. I get to say, son, this is what we did on our watch. Don't you, your daughters and your, your, your aunties, they don't have to worry about breast cancer because our children at 
at Yale, at Stanford, at Harvard, at the universities of China. We got together and we found a way to actually reduce the risk. We get to say on our watch that we are stakeholders in the evolution of humanity, not to allow the visions or the, the, the negative images that we watch on TV stop us from like you're doing, starring in the new visions, the blockbusters of the future. And that's when you get that stakeholder relationship. And guess what? Then the placeholders will pile up. That's some people that are just come and they'll want to hold your place until they could take it. <laughs> <laughs> but you hey man, there's a lot of them out there. We need to learn that every person, no person is expendable just because they can't do something for you, just because they're not going to introduce you to your next big break. People come to California with a dream and they wonder why they only meet shareholders, but you got to understand you got to have a service driven mindset. You got to look at what can you do to make a difference in the lives of others if you're going to make something durable and sustainable. And then you won't just be walking around like the walking, breathing dead, just taking up space. Because when you walk into the space, people will know that you are contributing something to society. And if you are willing to contribute, then you are addicted to success. And if you're not, then you're just addicted to the press. You're just addicted to excuses. <laughs> but you can't be doing that if you're rocking with us. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> man, you are in flow right now. I don't know what you're tapping into right now, man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, it's what uh, I've look. seen. It's what I've seen. Yeah. So many times we can pessimist, we can be so optimistic that we are blinded to the realities that that surround us and all of our 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 wishful thinking. We can walk right past uh, drive right past the homelessness in our coop and complain and walk by. But you know what? Some people said, hey, I'm going to create tiny homes. Some people, while other people are saying, hey, not in my backyard, there's an organization called Yimby. Yes, in my backyard. Out of this emphasis, yes, in my backyard. We want to actually stop this, this housing crisis where people have to choose between, okay, do I do a job that I, that I dislike where I'm unappreciated or do I go out and start my new business? But how can I do that when it's hard to afford a place to live? And, and all of that we know is a part of the limited belief system. Okay, there's, there's, we have more opportunities in this world today than we've ever had throughout mankind. I don't care what you Googled. I don't care what conspiracy you tapped into. I don't care what you heard. These are the new golden age is emerging. The new golden era. It's not just for California. This is the first time when we can communicate without getting on boats, without traveling and using compasses. And what are we going to do with these tools? What are we going to do with our freedom to speak, to speak up, to injustice? What are we going to do with our right to vote when those sacrifice their lives just so that our voice wouldn't be left out of the process? What will we do with our ideals? What will we tell our children that all we did was bicker and argue? No not on our watch. And I appreciate your movement because you are a stakeholder. You are a stakeholder, a stakeholder for humanity. And what you're doing is impacting Mm -hmm. millions and you are the definition of an immortal impact. But when you're making an immortal impact, everybody wants that microwave type of impact. They want to see that quick fix. Need to see how many jobs get gained right now. The president's only been in office for 48 hours and they're already calling for him to be out of office. Leave my president alone. Leave my leaders alone. Leave my city councilmen alone. Leave my governors. Leave my congressmen alone. Back up and quit worrying about what's happening in the White House and start focusing on what's happening in your house. We're America and we've got this over here. And right now we need servant leaders from all around the globe to join together and looking at solutions instead of the problems. Amen, brother. I couldn't agree more. You know, what's really interesting, dude, is, uh, you know, I've been very vocal about my faith in God, right, recently. And what's really interesting is a lot of people are reaching out to me. They're messaging me in my inbox. And we're talking guys that have multi-millions of dollars. They have the jets. They have the Rolls Royces and all that. And they're like, Joel, 
I have all these things, but I feel spiritually broke. I feel empty. Talking to that, man, what do you, what do you, cause like, this is a big thing, right? Like a lot of people now are getting so absorbed in the things that don't matter, the material. They're just saying what's popular instead of operating from their principles. Well, from what lies under their heart, they're just going for whatever's popular and saying whatever's popular and they're coming up short. Well, yes. So that's actually right here. Um, there are seven principles in my book, Harvard Effect, that I'm going to go over right now. We're going to dive into it. I haven't gone Let's do it. this much material. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you have to buy the book right away, okay? So, hey, do you get do you get the do you get the lenses too, man? You got some you got cool red glasses lenses. going the on right now. The leader lenses come with it, and guess what? Leader lenses. The leader lenses come with it, and they come with special technology that that we we track it and engage your progress over a ten year period, okay? Once I'm elected into office, this will run automatically without me having to touch it using the power of technology. I got ten years of motivational content that comes with this. Because as wow. a leader, you don't get the right to put a name tag on there and put your badge up on a wall and put your plaques up and think that you've arrived. The economy is shifting. <sighs> the traditional yeah. economy is annually growing at about 1.7%, 1 1.5 to 1.7%. And, and the, but the new economy, the digital economy, this this new with, with mobile technology with 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 ai with bots with with utilizing turning your cell phone into a cash register creating mass micro businesses that's growing at 15% okay and the top you know you've got over 146 countries worldwide that's valued over a billion dollars this is prosperity time people and how did it happen? Guess what? It didn't happen overnight. So the first principle is this H right here. It starts with H stands for a hundred year plan. <laughs> okay. A <laughs> hundred year plan. Now, somebody might say, hold on, excuse me, excuse me. I'm just trying to think about how I'm going to get my kids as a president for Christmas <laughs> or where I'm going to stay next week. What do I need a hundred year plan for? Whitney Young said, it, you know, it's better to be it, people. People don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. And what has happened is our habits, our attitudes, our lifestyles, our laws, our communities, they didn't get the way they are today overnight. So I was, I've been in this industry for over, for all my life. I was born in a motivational workshop. I think Derek <laughs> Robbins and I are the only ones that can say that truly. And, and also Melody Hansen and some others, right? But, uh, but one of the things, I've seen it all and I've heard it all. But my dad, the great Les Brown, who they once called DT. DT, it was worse than the N-word. DT stood for the dumb twin the dumb twin mm, that's Imagine cold man answering to that name when you're a kid but that same little yeah. kid because he had a goal and because he had a plan just a plan to buy his mother a home just that one plan to buy his mother home to give back to his mom he would find a way to give back, to become a small business owner, to create jobs, and to inspire millions of people across the globe. And suddenly, the Gates family called. Uh, Bill Gates, you might have heard of him. And <laughs> I might have. <laughs> they asked him to speak, and, and as he was motivating his audience afterwards, they took him in the back room and said, hey, Mr. Brown, we love your speech about the five and 10 year goals. That's powerful. But let me show you something. This is where the Gates family will be in the area of technology a hundred years from now. And they showed him a hundred year plan. And what that my dad was thinking was, he said, wow. What I was saying, Joel, was how? How do you make a hundred year plan for addicted to success? So that a hundred years from now, this is the site that young people are tuned in before they go to class, while they're studying in between, they're going in and tuned into the new June Addicted to Success Little League a hundred years from now. How do you actually put a hundred year plan? I'm in Orange County, so many businesses you walk by, been around 40, 50, 60 years. Most businesses don't make it. 
most businesses struggle in their first three to five years. They never make it out of that phase, whether they have the capital, whether they've got the idea, whether they've got the expertise of the degrees. Why? It all boils down to leadership. And you cannot lead people where you, if you don't have a clear vision and your hundred year plan is not about what you're going to get, what type of car you're going to drive, how all your friends are going to have to respect you after you receive the title. No, that is not what it's about. That's how you end up full on the outside and empty on the inside. That's how you end up misplacing your destiny. There's a difference between a dream and a destiny. See, when I, when I was, my son, Honor Phoenix Brown was born, I had a dream for him. But when I set up this company, Brown Honor Inc., I'm giving him a destiny that no matter what happens, this is the hill that I'm willing to thrive on no matter what happens. A hundred years from now, his children and his children's children will have a roadmap and a blueprint based off of songs I made in my basement last week <laughs> and, last <laughs> week, and several years ago. But now, because of technology, because of the ability to grasp, to organize at the grassroots level, I'm turning those same lyrics into legislation. I'm turning that my poetry of the, my youth into the policy of the future. And, and right now, I want you to look at your life. Your, your 100 year plan will give you a leader lens. You see, these are leader lenses. And this is something that we're going to use as a tool to help you think about the future and not the past. We all look at life through a different lens. And, and one of the things that we know now is you have to ask yourself, what qualified? Ed Zuckerberg's baby boy, the son of a dentist, to transform the way the world communicates and to bring the globe closer together with Facebook. The same thing that qualifies him qualifies me. Every once in a while, someone comes around to disrupt, to innovate, and to create real change. And today, that someone is me. And that someone is Joel Brown. And that someone, that someone is the addicted to, those that are addicted to success. <laughs> yes, brother, yes, I agree. Man, vi vision is not a matter of, of uh, chance, right? It's a matter of choice. I think a lot of people sit around hoping that the vision will just come, the 100 year plan, the legacy will just fall into their lap. It doesn't happen like that, man. It doesn't no, no, no. It doesn't plan. happen like that. Now, here's the thing about it. You got to keep in mind, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian as well. And, and you know, God doesn't wear a watch, okay? You got to understand that. <laughs> yeah, and so true. what I did, when you look at great companies like Toyota, like Amazon, like all of these great companies, like our, our great nations, the purpose of a 100-year plan is not to create a fixed result for the next hundred years. The purpose of a hundred year plan is to get management and ownership out of the fixation of quarterly results so that you can be prepared for what's next. And let me tell you what's next. Let me tell you what's next. We believe in making profits and in protecting our environment. Let me tell you what's next. There's not a disease that's stronger than our scientific minds. Let me tell you what's next. We build houses, from TPs, and we will find a way to reduce this housing crisis that's not allowing people to have the, the, the to, to really take full participation in the opportunities because everyone wants the American dream, but only few of those are willing to go out every day and instead of fight for it, to thrive for it, to heal for it, to inspire for it, to pray for it. To, instead of gossiping about it, to, to encourage for it. And so I'm encouraging all elected officials, all citizens to really develop a hundred year plan, develop a hundred year plan for yourself, for your family. Did you know, did you know, Joel, that 70% that of wealth is gone by the second generation and over 90% uh, by the third? I, I, I mean, I could see it because they didn't understand the hustle. They didn't appreciate, right? And or the possibilities. The possibilities there are so yeah. many possibilities that exist today that did not exist. It did not happen 
all at once. It happened with right. years, starting with Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace, the first female, um, the first female software engineer, working with her mentors, these great minds. As you know, the the movie um, Hidden Colors, the yeah. computers. They they were you know we were the computers, the women, the men, the great people working together on scientific formulas, and and. Ronald Reagan, our great president, he said, a great society must be a free society. And to mm. truly be great and really free, it must be a creative society. And I, I don't know what it's going to take, but I know it's going to take us working together to be yeah. as creative as we can in spite of what's happening on the news, in spite of illnesses that happen in our family in spite of some of the harsh realities of life we've got a the first the h stands for 100 year plan okay i'm sorry you got me on there okay now then you've got the a it stands for allow yourself to fall okay allow yourself to fall so many people won't even think of daring to dream because they don't want to fail 87% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. So it's not the job market that's messed up, but if you don't have the confidence to go in there and sell yourself and communicate to elevate, see, that's what you have to do when you feel down, when you fall, you've got to communicate to elevate. And that's when you go back to your hundred year plan, not where you are right now, but where you are going. There were times, tough times, times when, I didn't think that my family was going to make it. My brother, my mother, my grandmother, my dad, we've all faced different challenges. But you know what? We're a family. We're a family. And no matter, I tell you something, Joe. No matter how hard it gets, or how, how weak we think we are because of how hurtful we feel sometimes. At the end of the day, we come together like a family. Yes. And we are a family, you mm -hmm. and me, despite our borders, despite our oceans, despite our accents. I love your accent. <laughs> I can't do it that well. But we are a family. And, and I might not be the perfect person to lead this family, but I'm not going to be a person that's going to be quiet in this family. My family lives here. Mm. And your family lives here. And our mm. voices matter. And so if we're too afraid to fall, we'll never stand. And we've got to remember that failure is not failure. How can you how can you talk about oh how, how much you love the Constitution when oh it didn't give equal rights to everyone? forget about that everyone's not perfect if you want to grow up in a perfect society you go there live there you go find that one and they'll still be trying to get to America baby <laughs> <laughs> and so what has happened is right. we've evolved we've evolved and at the end of the day people are searching for people people just want to know that they're part of the American family, that they're part of the human family, this global family. Without this global economy, we wouldn't be nearly where we are today. And I give, right. thanks. I give thanks for you doing the work before people knew that this was work. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think people want to be want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want to know that their life has meaning. They want to feel and sometimes, yes, and sometimes, Joe, sometimes we forget, even leaders. Sometimes we forget how important our voices are. Sometimes we forget how precious our lives are. And that's why I wear my leader lenses every day. I can't even see what I'm on, but I can, I, I, I got perfect vision though. <laughs> so, for, so, so for the Democrats, we got the blue leader lenses for you. Don't worry. I'm a proud Republican, a, a party that was started on, on 
ending human trafficking on on freeing slaves i mean yeah. that's that's inspiring that that's part of our history and that i get to represent the party as we move into a new era grassroots yeah. rebuilding the california republican party so many people feel like hey they won't even vote now because of partisan de- bickering but when we have right. political mastermind instead of a political debate, and now don't get me wrong, we're ready to debate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see William F. Buckley in my ear. But <laughs> at the end of the day, what we got to do, we can't just we can't just make promises. We got to make progress, and that comes with what right. we. Right. I think I think I think one of the key not to get too political, but I think one of the key things is like. We, I think you got to go back and look at history too and see what was a what was a country that you're in built on like nations have fallen over and over again when they choose personal preference over truth like it's like you know going up and saying let's tear down this fence you got to ask why was the fence put there in the first place mm. right and it's the same thing with like you know how countries built you look at it it's like what are the foundations that they build on why are people now trying to change them are they changing them for their own personal preference and their own because they want to be like living in the way that they want and they want all this autonomy. Autonomy isn't always a good thing. I think a lot of people push for that, man. They're like, well, I want my personal preference. But what if we gave everybody personal preference? Then there's going to be, people think it's like equal and everybody's off. No, all it's going to create is more conflict because now everybody's used to getting everything the way that they want and they're going to clash. And so one of the big things I worry about looking forward in the future is just like, don't forget truth. Don't forget. Don't forget foundations and principles and the good things that like the countries and, and uh, lives are built on hard, solid truth and, and good principles. And so Veritas. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's the uh, Harvard name, Veritas. And that's what shaped it for me when, when the great, the mother of all colleges, Harvard University invited me to speak. You know, I, I ran for governor in 2014. I, I came I looked, I Googled everything, Joel. I studied the issues. I was so passionate. I got some supporters. I was outside the county's clerk office. Instead of just getting signatures, I wanted to talk to the people, rapping about my issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I came three signatures short of actually making it on the ballot. Oh, wow. And I felt felt like a complete failure. But Mm -hmm. you know what? I felt like I felt like I was never going to come out of my house again. How can I explain this to the people? You know what? I didn't fail. That was a failure. And that's the thing that we've got to remember that you can never confuse. Failure is not failure. And Mm. my dad's quote that I love, he said, when you get knocked down, always try to land on your back in life. Because if you could look up, you can get up. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I love that quote. And here it is. It's four years later. Four years later, and I'm getting back up four years later, and and I'm a dad. My son is four years old, and he knows about the 100-year plan. He's part of it. A, allow yourself to fall. R, resource management. Resource management. That's another key principle. What are your most important resources? Well, it's not your stocks and bonds. (laughs) I'm sorry. Those are very important. I get it. It, it, But it's your smiles and stares. It's your quality time with your family. It's the building of, of something greater than you. And like I said, the Pledge of Allegiance, it starts with I, but it, it ends with all. And each and every one of us in this nation, we are, we are a family. And no matter what, the best resources that we're going to have is the human capital between us. And so whether you're a stakeholder, a placeholder, or a shareholder, you're not to be discarded like you're not human. You need some placeholders to keep you level sometime. Because (laughs) when you fall, remember this, uh, Dennis Whaley, one of my great mentors and the author of The Psychology of Success, he said, humility is not humiliation. Humility (laughs) is not humiliation. I love that. Wow. Awesome, brother. So, so real quick, 
before we wrap up the call, you got V A R D, right? So you shared the H A R. What's the V A R D? They're gonna have. Quick. They're gonna have to get the book. To they got to get the book. <laughs> Get the there you go. This is, hey. this is what we'll do is I, I've got a, a, <laughs> the first chapter of the Harvard Effect and my dad's new book coming out together called You Gotta Be Hungry is combined. You get both of our chapters together sharing different stories from different versions. And so if you go to the website, you get that free of charge and then you'll, you'll find out the rest of, of the Harvard Effect coming soon. Also, it's available on Amazon and and I can't even unload the rest until you start there. You're not ready for the Harvard effect, but here's what I know. First of all, you know, I, I want to thank, um, we've got a, a great education system here in America. Fantastic. My son was born in Long Beach where we have one of the top five school districts in the world. I'm so proud of that. I look forward to working with uh, the top people in education to develop a hundred year plan for education to make sure that our kids are being taught entrepreneurial skills and life skills and the emotional intelligence that it takes to make it in a global economy. Going from, you know, from sewing to coding, you know, <laughs> in the classroom, <laughs> whatever. And, and um, but, you know, as, as you look at your future and as you, look at your thing. I know legacy is important, but here's something to remember. Legacy is all about how you want to be remembered. But dynasty, dynasty is about why you will never be forgotten. And right now, whether you realize it or not, there are three curriculums of success. And that's what I share. I'll go through this, all of this in, the, in this book. But there are three curriculums of success. First, you've got the dream phase. And that, that's what unites us. The dreams. They put Democrats and Republicans in the same room, put them in different clothes, didn't tell them who each other were, ask them different questions. Guess what? They agreed on 87% of the issues. But guess what? They didn't have it. When you took off their leader lenses, they went back to the differences. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so once you have that dream and you turn it into a business or a campaign or something that serves others and you allow it to, to, to bring value to the marketplace, then, then you make an immortal impact and you're part of that dynasty. A hundred years from now, they'll be watching these videos, wearing these hats, looking at leader lens. It's the 8.80.0 version. You know? So I just thank you so much for what you're doing. I thank you so much for the the changes, the, the authentic change that you're making in the world and for building a platform for people like myself and all the great thought leaders. I just love watching your interviews. You're the best in the business, man. Oh, thank you, brother. Look, man, at Addicted to Success, we always say we're not here to be average. We are here to be awesome. And you are absolutely doing that with everything that you do, brother. Thank you so much, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you in office too. Thank this you. This time you're going to get the signatures. <laughs> yeah. More than it. the signatures. More than the signatures. This time, man. you know, I'm, I'm already, I'm already, I'm more importantly, my goal from the beginning was to make as big as a difference on the campaign trail as I'm going to make once I get into office, okay? So we're not waiting. You don't have to be an elected official to make a difference in your community. A lot of politics is at the local level. It's about getting involved and working together. And so I'm excited and I'm, this is my dream and I'm just so happy that I'm, I've had the opportunity to follow through with it and friends like you with millions of followers so we can get the word out. You heard it here live. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. All right, man. Thanks a million for jumping on, dude. Uh, where can uh, people connect with you online? Online, leaderlenses.com. Boom, leaderlenses.com. Go download the free book, It's Your Time. Also on Facebook, facebook.com slash it's not over until we win. And uh, yes, let's stay connected. I'm, I'm really excited about working with thought leaders like yourself from all around the globe. 
and uh, making a difference. Here's one thing that my dad taught me, and I'll never forget it, and I'll leave this with your viewers from around the world. The reason why most people fail in life is not because they aim too high and miss, it's because they aim too low and hit. And so many of us don't aim at all. This has been John Leslie Brown, Les Brown's baby boy, Mamie Brown's grandbaby boys, and honor Phoenix Brown's pride and joy. <laughs> so it's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, John Leslie, you knocked out of the park, brother. Dude, one more thing, because I can't break this. This has to happen because at the end of every interview, I always ask this one last question. Okay. And I know that you get in the flow state and you love like rapping and all that. So, so this last question, man, just go all for it, man. 30 seconds. All right. If you were to deliver your last 30 second speech to the world, what would that last 30 seconds sound like? My daddy's worth over 60 mil, but wouldn't give me 60 cents to stop from getting killed. Cause he say this greatness I'ma build Won't get noticed if I'm waiting on his will I'm starting to get a little thrill Cause they say I'm poor but I'm feeling richer than him So I'ma let y'all know the deal When my album's in the stores You know it's gonna be a 10 I ain't rapping so I can pay the rent But I spit bars cause people behind bars got children And if you're slow and it still don't make sense I'm high hopes, take a pause and just listen These jaws were made by the motivator of millions My daddy got paid but I'ma get the prisons At an early age I have my own business And it's still early so can I get a witness? I started at the top and I went back down my album can't flop, it's time for the bounce. I think I'll call this lost and found. So if they call you lost, no, you're probably bound. <laughs> oh, brother, I love it. Thank you so much, man. That was an awesome last 30 seconds. <laughs> if my daddy knew I could spit like this, he might tell you he helped me write this, but it's my heavenly father's gift. My daddy just taught me the value of my lips. My mama's pissed cause it ain't copy rip, but these are skills. Nobody could copy it. They don't think you can be big and make a hit without cursing and violence. But can I get a moment of violence for the stick they split my eye hole with? Mm. I love you, man. My 30 seconds is up. <laughs> I, gave you a, I gave you the additional 30 for that one, man. That was that good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Thanks man. for jumping you know on. What? We got to understand, the next 30 seconds isn't promised. The next mm -hmm. 30 seconds isn't promised, so if you give me 30 seconds, I'm going to take 45. Let's not act like everything is fairy tales here, okay? Freedom was gained from a mastermind of years. And the moment that you have life, nothing else is promised from you, but you have the choice to do what you're doing. And if you're silent in your last 30 seconds, then that's your choice. You have the right to remain silent, but you have the right to remain proactive. You have the right not to just protest, but you have the right to produce. You have the right to be creative. You have the right to disrupt a process that needs to move in a different direction with your innovative leadership strategies. And if this is my last 30 seconds, then I will know that every second counted because it does count. Thank you. <laughs>